Number 61, unreasonable results. A fairly large garden hose has an internal radius of 0.6 centimeters and a length of 23 meters. The nozzle-less horizontal hose is attached to a faucet and it delivers 50 liters per second. Letter A, what water pressure is supplied by the faucet? All right, um, so here's a little diagram, right? We have a certain length of the tube. We're gonna have a certain flow rate through the tube. We have a certain radius, right? And we wanna know what the pressure is at the faucet. So the faucet, you know, in relation to, we're gonna have a certain pressure at the faucet, and then we're gonna have a certain pressure at the exit, okay? We'll call this P sub E, I guess. You can call it, you know, one, you know, two and one, it doesn't matter what you call it. But there better exist a pressure differential between these two locations, otherwise there will be no flow. Why? Well, look at this formula over here on the right-hand side. This says that flow rate is equivalent to this mumbo jumbo. But part of this mumbo jumbo is the difference in pressure. If the difference in pressure between two points is the same, meaning you subtract the same number from itself, then this becomes zero and the whole thing becomes zero. All right? So there must be exist a uh, there must exist a pressure differential. Now, are they asking us for gauge pressure? Are they asking us for you know total pressure? Uh, so basically, what they it doesn't matter how we frame this problem because either way we're going to get the same answer. So if I if I assume that I'm going to be calculating gauge pressure here, all right, that means I'm going to neglect any type of uh, pressure due to uh, atmospheric pressure. That is. So what I mean by that is I assume that the pressure at the exit point is then zero, and then I would solve for my pressure at the faucet. All right, so essentially in this formula, then P2 becomes uh, P sub F, and this is zero. And I solve for P sub F. Okay, great. If I want to find, you know, if I if I don't do it that way, I'm still going to come up with the same answer. All right, uh, though the only difference now is that I'm going to be solving for the total, or I should say this, I should, the answer won't be identical, but the what I will be solving for now will be the total absolute pressure at the faucet, including atmospheric pressure. So if I do that then, I plug in for my uh, pressure at the end, it's gonna be 1.013 times 10 to the fifth Pascal. And then I'm gonna solve for my piece of F. So if I plug this in, right? I plug that in there, I solve for my piece of F. And then I'm gonna get the total overall pressure here at the faucet. But if I wanna find the gauge pressure, you have to remember this formula that the total absolute pressure at a particular point will be equal to the gauge pressure plus the atmospheric pressure. And therefore, if I, if you think about this mathematically, I'm gonna find that total pressure, okay? And then I'm gonna be subtracting out this atmospheric pressure anyway, right? So that being said, to simplify the problem, most likely they're asking us for the gauge pressure, okay? And that being the case, what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna solve this thing for the gauge pressure, okay? Meaning that the exit pressure here will be zero. Just wanted to mention, you know, how to, given the certain assumptions, how to solve the how to solve the problem. So now I'm going to use the formula. Okay, P2 minus P1. I don't even know how to pronounce this guy's name. It's like Boisoyi or something. I I I I've heard it pronounced 15 different ways. Um, so yeah, just a little. I I don't. Okay. Anyway, moving on. So. Here's the formula. We want to find a P sub 2. We know P sub 1 is 0, as we said, so that'll cancel, okay? Now we want to find P sub 2. That means let's move all the variables out of the denominator into the numerator up here. And before I do that, let me just give myself a little more space. So move all these values out of there, over to there. Move these values up there, down to here. Put your little division sign. Clean up the right side. Get rid of this, right? Erase, that's zero, who cares? And look, here's the formula. So easy, right? So now, all we have to do is just plug in the values. Remember, P2 is really the gauge pressure of the faucet. So now, do we know everything? Well, do we know the viscosity of the fluid? Well, what fluid are we talking about? Well, we're talking about uh, water, right? So we know the viscosity of water. The length of the tube, they told us, is gonna be 23 meters, okay? The radius of the tube, they also told us, but they gave it to us in centimeters, so I just, you know, did you the service, I guess, of converting it to meters, but you can, you know, just take this value of, and divide it by 100. And now from here, uh, and oh, how about the flow rate? Yes, we also know the flow rate, but that's in liters per second. So remember to convert this into meters cubed per second, which you must do, um, you want to divide that value by 1000. Okay, so now let's plug in everything that we know. 
All right. Oh, and by the way, what's the water temperature, right? It doesn't tell us what temperature to use, so we have to make an assumption. Let's assume that the water is at 20 degrees Celsius. Okay, so we have 8 multiplied down by 1.002 times 10 to the minus 3. The length of the tube is 23 meters. Uh, the flow rate is going to be 50 divided by 1,000. As we said, we had to do that conversion. Then divide this now by pi multiplied by the radius, 0 0.006, and raise that to the fourth power. And this will be equal to the pressure at that faucet, essentially. So let's throw it on into the calculator and let's see. So we got 8 times 1.002 times 10 to the minus 3 multiplied by 23 times n50 divided by 1,000. And then take that all and divide it now by pi times 0 0.006 raised to the fourth. And what do we get? We get a pressure now of about 2.26. 2.26 times 10 raised to the 3 times 6 to the sixth. Okay, and this is in Pascal. Now, what's unreasonable about this, right? What does it say? What's unreasonable about, the, about this pressure? So, I mean, this is way too high. I don't know how else to phrase it. It's just way too high. If you had to convert this into atmospheres, let's say, you take this value and divide it by 1.013 times 10 to the fifth. So let's do that, 1.013 times 10 to the fifth. And we get an atmosphere pressure, or pressure in atmospheres, of 22.4 or so, 22.4 atms. I mean, that might make this a little more real, all right? This is an extreme amount of pressure, uh, definitely more, much more than what will be supplied by a typical uh, spigot. So, okay, and then uh, what is unreasonable about the premise? So what are the values that went into the premise here? Uh, yeah, 50 liters per second. I don't know if you've ever, you know, played with a garden hose, but 50 liters? Every second, you know, a gallon, what, a gallon's about four liters, right? So you could take this and divide it by four, right? And realize that's the gallons per second. I mean, the, the, the flow rate is insane. So that's the unreasonable premise. It's the flow rate. And then D, what is the Reynolds number for the given flow? Okay. Also, it says take the viscosity of water to be this. I realize I assumed a slightly different value, but, you know, what are you going to do? Um you know, the answer should be pretty, pretty close. Uh, so the Reynolds number here, you got to know the Reynolds formula. Remember, we've done this in the past, right? The Reynolds value here. If you notice, I'm running through these problems because all these problems are so similar that that's how it should be when you're practicing, right? As you continue forward, I spend a lot of time explaining the concepts at the beginning uh, of the set of problems when the concept is introduced. And then after that, we're just running through it, right? So this is going to be uh, 2 multiplied by the density of the fluid, multiplied by the ve uh, velocity, multiplied then by... The radius of the tube divided by the viscosity. We don't know the volume, but we do know the flow rate. And therefore, I'm going to take V and solve it for, excuse me, take this equation, solve it for V. So that's Q over A. And then V uh, will be equal to Q over pi R squared. So we can now take that and plug it on in for my V over here. And now we have the Reynolds number being equal to 2 multiplied by the density. So let me now plug that in yet. Multiply them by Q over pi R squared times R all over the viscosity. Look, the R will cancel here with one of them there. And there's our formula. Now all we have to do is just plug in the numbers. All right, I'm going to do it over here on the right-hand side. So the Reynolds number will become 2 multiplied by the density of that water. So we're going to assume that it's 1,000. All right, fresh water. Multiplied then by the flow rate, and that has to be 50 over right, 1,000. Divided then by pi times the radius of 0 0.006, as we found before. That doesn't really look like a 6, does it? There it is. And then divide this whole thing now by uh, the viscosity. I'll use, I guess, this number now, since that's what they gave me, 0 0.005 times 10 to the minus 3. And let's see what the Reynolds number is. So we take 2 multiplied by 2 times 1,000, times then uh, 50 over 1,000. And then take that and divide it now by pi times 0 0.006. And then divide that result by 1.005 times 10 to the minus 3. And there's your Reynolds number of 5.28. 5.28 times 10 raised to the 3. Looks like 6, right? So your Reynolds number is about 5 million. Okay? Anything over 3,000 is considered turbulent. So, uh... I think that's pretty turbulent. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it very much. Please remember to help us out and subscribe. We appreciate it very much, and we look forward to helping you with more questions. Take care.